Heyo! It's me! Welcome back to Qantas, everybody. Um, I just noticed that my little monocle is like totally... Oh, I can zoom backwards. This is crazy. Um, it's like on my eye. On my eye. You know, it's not like... It's not like around my eye. It's like on it. Look, it's so weird. Um, but we're, we're going to do something special today because I've gone through about 20 of these iron pickaxes, okay? It's not even funny. Like, we had like two stacks of iron. Remember that? Plus the iron blocks that we have here. And now we're down to like 39. Like, I've been going through iron picks like it's nobody's business. So, we're smelting some grout. Oh, that was perfect. Look at that. So, we're just smelting up some glass and some grout um, and making these into seared bricks. And we're going to do a new thing. Look, I made a new room. I kind of just started it, right? Um, so this is the trend. It's going to be, you know, chiseled chiseled um, basalt brick walls as the theme runs. And we're going to do some normal floors. And then we're going to put our tinkers in here, okay? Because tinkers is, like, super awesome. I have the tinkers materials here to make more grout. And, uh, yeah, let's make it happen. So we're, what I want to do is I want to have two sets of the, what is it? The tool forge. I want to have two sets of that. Whoa, that is a cool looking forge. Um, I want to have two sets of the tool forge. So it's going to need eight blocks of iron and then these and then a tool station. So let's get two crafting benches. And the reason that I want. Oh, so check this out. Look at this. You see how our chest is so full here? See this? Like, I love, I love how when I start recording, I remind myself of all these things. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, but so I created a recipe for... I didn't create the recipe. I just put it down for basic drawers. And we have eight of these. And they're going to hold 32 stacks of whatever we want them to hold. So we're going to go ahead and put a, put a drawer in right there. And we'll put one in right there. And those are pretty good places because you can't see any of the sides other than them which is nice. So obviously we can't really, we can't, well, actually that's really nice that it, you know, the hitbox for this thing is not that large. It's just to the edge here, which is really cool. But anyway, we're going to take all of the cobblestone out. Ooh, didn't want to do that. Let us bring everything back here. Hold the phone, everybody. Um, we want to take all the cobblestone. There we go. And we want to put that in here. Okay, so that's going to hold all of our cobblestone that's already clearing out our chest quite a bit. And then all of our smooth stone is actually going to go in this one. Okay, perfect. So, with all of the cleared space, we can put all of our blocks back and not have to worry about it. Um, these basic drawers will come in handy, and we'll be able to use these, I think, right side up. No, that's fine. Um, let me just mine this with a thing. So, the idea here is that we're going to make um, two separate iterations of this tool forge. So, we have two, well, now we have three. It's fine. We're going to have two of these crafting stations. And in order to make the tool forge, we're going to need, let's just make a whole bunch of wood into, let's make this much into sticks. And then we'll do this. Okay, so that's a stack of blank patterns. Wow, I can't believe I did that math in my head like perfectly there. And we're going to make two tool stations. Then we're going to get these seared bricks, turn them into blocks. And then we're going to do two sets on the top, tool stations there. And we're going to need eight of these. Ooh, more. And we'll go like that. And that gives us two tool forges. Okay, we'll put one there. That, one, that one's just going to be for quick access, you know what I mean? And then this one is going to go somewhere in here, so we'll start there. That's fine. Um, but the whole reason for doing this is that, obviously, um, at Tinker's, so you can see the there is so much diversity in the type of tools you can make. All right, so this needs to be here. Tool Forge needs to be there. That's what it is. Um, so that way, this stencil table can put into the pattern chest, and this part builder can take out of the pattern chest. And everything can be happy. Okay. All right. All righty. So with the tool forge, rather than just the tool station, now you can see we can make a crossbow. We can make arrows. We can make longbow, shortbow, cleaver. We can make a scythe. Um, we can make excavator, lumber axe, hammer, all this extra stuff that could not be made 
with just the normal guy. And I'll show you the normal guy. Um, well, actually, I'll just tell you. I'll just I'll tell you because I don't want to waste. I don't want to waste any more resources. Also, I got to show you some things that I've done, um, which I probably should have done, you know, ten minutes ago. But that's fine. Let me. Um, let me just put these patterns. Ooh, not there. In here. Okay. And then the pattern, the other pattern chest is going to go, you know, somewhere else um, in the actual build. So that's fine. This will go here. And these bricks, I needed to, I need to create some more of these. So I'm going to place these down for you and I will show you what I'm talking about. So two more of those. All right. I know I'm going crazy here. Bam. And bam, how does this look? I like it. I like it. I'll probably do some editing to this corner here and here, but I'm not going to do that on camera. So you can see here with our kitty, our kitty here is sitting. I don't really know what to call the cat. If you have a, if you have an idea for the name of the cat, let me know. Um, I have opened a suggestion. I have no idea what I'm going to call it. I'm just going to end up calling it Catzel, you know, if nothing, if no suggestions come out, because that's kind of my, that's kind of my shtick. But anyways, so this is our reset button, and I did a little bit of an edit down below, and I'll show you. But we press the button, get the little get the little response, right? Come in here, and you can see I did a little different thing here. So apparently, the circuit that I was using, and let me actually see if I can get up here. Um, let me just do this for a second. So the circuit I was using, you can see it's a little bit different now. Um, I'm using some uh, redstone impregnated sticks to kind of pull the pull the signal above and kind of make it go over. Um, and all this is is just vertical redstone. It's just a vertical redstone apparatus, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so actually this little inventory scanner is checking for the hopper and it does reset the timer. Um, it just doesn't make the redstone light up anymore because I think it's just passing through so fast that uh, it's, not, it's not doing it right. But you could tell from the last episode, like when we did it, it toggled the lever, which was fine. It was supposed to do that. So it's working just fine. And I tested it in creative and everything's fine. I did it on a 10 second um, theoretical scale and it works just fine. So on the 30 minute scale, I know that it works good. And over here, the redstone is actually split and it comes down and um, you can see it kind of activates the reset and the, uh, the note block. So when the redstone signal comes down from here, comes up, hits this block, and then I don't know if you can really tell, but right over here where I'm looking, right there, um, there is an input for, I just like seriously popped on the mic there, my bad. There is an input there, and that goes into resetting this pulser, and it also goes over everything, and then it hits out to this side to told, tell the note block to do a note, and it also resets your output here. So if this ended up getting full and you wanted to turn it back on after you had emptied the, uh, the contents of the chest up here, then, um, then you could reset that. So you would empty the chest first, then press the button, and everything would reset, and you would continue to get your timer. So everything's working and in order, and if you would like a more detailed and in-depth explanation of that, I can show it to you. Now... I'm going to show you how we did our button. Check this out. So as you might tell, this is the off and this is the on. Pretty cool, huh? So let me show you what I did. It's a pretty simple circuit and it just kind of runs across these. So what happens here is your redstone comes in and flips this lever, right? It also, the same pulse coming from there, um, will give you a response from these note blocks. So when it is on, right, which is, this is the on position because this is toggling. Um, when it is on, this lever is going to push this way and the on uh, things will play, right? And they'll play in succession. So this one will play immediately. This one will play after, I think, two ticks. This one will play after four ticks. So it goes one, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, which is pretty good. So it's two ticks apart. And then you've got, um, the in, so the input for the lever is obviously it's going over a little bit. I had to kind of like, because obviously you can't go around anymore, so you have to kind of go above and then go down again. Um, so that kind of inputs the lever to toggle left and re left and right, and then when it comes out here, it goes across, and this one toggles after after I think like three ticks, because this ding ding is a little bit slower than or. 
the, so this one's a little faster because I wanted it, I don't know, it just sounds nicer. So this one's instant, and then this one is a little bit longer of a delay, like four ticks or three ticks or something. And then um, I could actually just like turn all of these off, but I kind of like them, you know? This doesn't seem to be lagging me out at all. And uh, if anybody does say, hey, you know, your bass is lagging me, I'll just, I'll, I'll do my little shift right click on these, all these circuits to make sure that they're off. So that the GUI is off. But basically, um, it's, a, it's a response that lets you know, without having to look at it, whether or not the furnace system is on. And I'm actually utilizing that currently, like, all the time. So if I only want the middle two furnaces to smelt something, like if I only have a couple of items, and I don't want it to be spread across four different sets of coal, right? Then I'll just, you know, turn it off. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then I'll just be using the middle furnaces. And if I want to turn it back on... And it's on. So it's pretty cool, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. It took me a little bit of time to get that going, but it's finally done, and I'm proud of it. So that was what I wanted to show you, and now we're going to start working on our tinkers. So this should for, f function now. F f work and function. Furk. <laughs> we'll be careful with that term, shall we? So this is fully functional now, this tinkers, this tinkers thing. We just need some lava, which uh, I guess I can just kind of... I guess, I don't know. I'll do like a little cut thing. I'll do a cute, I haven't done one of those in a couple episodes. I'll do a cute little, little cut scene and we will just go get ourselves some lava. So we need, we'll get like a couple buckets. We'll get, we'll get four buckets. Ooh, four buckets. Okay, four buckets. And we're just going to head over to the nether very quickly. And we're going to grab ourselves a little bit of lava here. Ooh, look at these magma blocks. I uh, I think I harvested some of these before. But we're just going to get ourselves... Whoa! So that sound! That's so cool. All right, so let's head back really quick. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I think we're safe. Dude, that gas, like, just shot at us. That's crazy. All right, but we're back by the uh, power of magic, which is really just the power of editing. But anyway, we're going to fill up our tank with... A lava over here and we're good to go so we can smell whatever we want in here and things will be happy and healthy <laughs> um, so let's let's figure out what we want to make something out of maybe we should make some oh hello kitty um, it still freaks me out listening to that cat but we're gonna do I think we'll do okay let's do like an iron pickaxe head just 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 for now bear with me here iron pickaxe head we'll put a diamond on it we'll put some redstone on it um and that'll be that then for the binding we're gonna need paper binding paper stick probably so we have paper right we have a little bit of paper and a couple sugar canes maybe this is enough for like the small time small time stuff so let's take a look we're gonna need a paper binding so binding pattern, put paper in there, bam, perfect. Paper binding and paper stick for paper for that one too. Okay, so we got enough. And then we're gonna go for a, a pickaxe head cast. So we're gonna need to make a pickaxe head out of like dirt. Okay, no, out of like cobblestone. Oh, cool, so we need two stone, all right. We probably need one smooth stone to make that, but now we should be able to pour some iron over that. Or actually, we need to pour some gold over it. So let's get however much gold we can carry. Let's get the gold ore. Let's put the gold ore in there. And we'll get that smelting. Get that a smelting. Okay. So obviously, once we get a good pickaxe, we'll do some mining and everything, and get that get that other room set up. But for now. I know I call this the ore shoot, but like I use it for everything though. I use it to smelt everything. So maybe it should be like furnace shoot or smelt smelterinos. I don't know. I'm going to leave it as ore shoot just because that's that's kind of how we made it. There's no reason to change it now. But um, yeah. Okay, so we should have enough to put this thing on there and make a cast. Yeah, there's gold in there. So let's make a cast. All right, maybe it looks like it only uses one ingot, which is nice. Wow. Okay, cool. So it consumes the pickaxe head, so I don't have to worry about that. And then 
we will use, you know what we're going to do for now? We're just going to put this here. You know, we're just going to like set them on the front of blocks and stuff all over this smeltery and we're not going to care. But we're going to put this in here and we're going to smelt up a little bit of iron. We probably need to smelt up more iron than that. I mean, let's be realistic here. We're probably not going to, but still. So let's do let's do eight iron ingots. Just to have them in there. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of iron in your smeltery. So we're just gonna fast forward through this really quick, I guess. And we're good. Okay, so we have eight molten iron ingots in there. Should be able to pour some iron. Oh, we have to put this in the bottom by left clicking it. And then will you pour some iron in there, please? Looks like you're doing it just fine. And now it melts up and then it dries and hardens, cools off. Perfect. So we have a molten pickaxe head. Let's put that on there. Still getting the button down for that because I haven't had a reason really to put stuff up there in that way. I did do it with the wand just because I didn't want to carry it everywhere. Um, so with this pickaxe head, we can actually use this guy. It doesn't matter. And we'll go for pickaxe, put this there, put this there, and put this there. So... It is magnetic, mining level diamond. Nice, nice. Can't really mine obsidian with it yet, but we will take a look at certain modifiers and packages that we can add to this. Mining speed six, attack five, modifiers four. That's crazy. So we're gonna call this pixel. Get it? Actually, we'll call it pixel, but for us, we will know that it's pixel, like this. I like it. Pixel. That's cute. The pixel. I really like that. I just thought about that just now. So this already has 27 durability, but it has a mining speed of, well, let's say it has five attack, which is more than this. So if we put a diamond on it or something, let's see what happens if we put on a diamond. Goes up to 500. So it's already double. A normal iron pickaxe. So see you later, buddy. You're just you're getting thrown into the into the abyss over here. Boop. See you later. And we're gonna go back up. So let's see what other modifiers we can put on this bad boy. I think we should be careful about doing what we're doing right now and figure out what level this will mine. Obsidian. Okay, so can we put an obsidian um can we use obsidian to make an obsidian thing? I want to make I want to make an obsidian sharpening kit, which will make the mining level cobalt. Okay, sharpening kits are huge, and most people don't know about them. But it takes 288 millibuckets, and this puts out 288 millibuckets. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna smelt up this obsidian sharpening kit pattern. We'll go over here, and we'll put in. It took two stone which is fine. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to make a cast while that obsidian smelts. Oh, looks like it smelted. Awesome. Okay, so let's put the sharpening kit here. And then we'll put the gold on the bottom, make a cast for it. Once the gold is finished pouring, we'll put the obsidian on the bottom. And then that will be done and we can put the obsidian into here. And that is... 40, 50%, 60, 70. I'm looking at the bottom right here. And that's done. And we can put this away. This will be very useful, the sharpening kits. Um, and especially because it's just obsidian and we can mine all the way up to cobalt with it is pretty big. And then I think with cobalt, we can actually add that to mine Ardite. Unless Ardite is just part of the cobalt mining level. In which case, yeah, it looks like it is. Yeah, so Cobalt cobalt will be able to mine Ardite because they're on the same mining level. So that's really nice. I mean, I'm just making that deduction. I'm not sure if that's actually true, but we'll take a look here. Um, oh, it needs to be crafted with a flint. So you need to get a flint as well. Put the kit down, sharpen it up with that. And we're only at 27 durability, but we can mine Cobalt. Okay, so we do need to put a diamond on there and we will be using modifier for that oh it didn't use a modifier boys we're in business okay so oh you know what we probably should have well it's fortified now which is cool but anyway we will put this here this has a mining level of cobalt which is very very nice um it's not going to mine a whole lot 
you know, for very long. But we should be able to just stack a bunch of redstone on this guy. 45. All right, we'll do it this way. So 50. 100. How many modifiers are left? One more. Let's do, I don't know, like... What adds durability? Can we do another diamond? No. It says a diamond can only be applied once. Dude, I love how interactive it is now. It's pretty cool. Um, maybe we just want to do like some moss, some mending moss. How do we do this now? Do we just put this and this together? Ah, we just put them together. Then we put the mossy stone like this, ball of moss. And then we need 10 levels and a bookshelf. We can make a bookshelf. Maybe it's looking for the bookshelf ID, which would be oak bookshelf. So let me use two separate types of wood. Watch this. This is a really cool feature, okay? So there's a dark oak planks, right? If I use five of these and then one of the other type, it'll just make a normal bookshelf. And that is because it doesn't know which one to choose, so it just defaults to the normal one. Now we can right-click this. Oh, yes! Okay, so now our last modifier will be mending moss. And that way... This thing should just like mend itself. It should just like heal its own durability when it's not in use. And I think the daylight, unless this is totally a different thing now, but I think the daylight helps it to go faster. Let's see. If it goes up by one at any point between 524 and 527, then it's working. I mean, it's on there. So if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it should be working just fine. So let's go over here. Now that we have a pretty nice pickaxe um, we can go back into the nether and we can start mining cobalt which is what we're going to need to make our final set of tools so let's get that going and then um, we're going to move this in next episode once I can actually mine that shit that stuff <laughs> mine that stuff out of there okay so let me um, just go back to the nether really quick and uh, we'll be looking for some cobalt and nardite oh Check it out. Dude, the luck. The luck, it's crazy. The power of editing. <laughs> Let's get some netherrack. Um, pile up to here. Wow. Look at that. We can mine it straight up. No problems. So, I'm just going to chill out here a little bit. We're going to mine up some cobalt and some ardite. Oh my goodness. What the heck is this thing? It's a ghost. It's a wraith. And it sounds like a chicken. He dropped soul beads. I'm not sure what they're used for. Obviously, it's not implemented yet. Um, but I just wanted to bring you guys back in, dude. It's the cobalt mother load. I need to show you this. This is incredible. Look at this. We're, we're pretty far away from um, our place. We are currently from the portal 500 meters. And look at this. Cobalt. 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 And then down here, cobalt. That's like 10. Come on. 11. I just found more. And some ardite right up here. Dude, we're in business. We're totally in business. This is insane. Okay, we're back after quite a few hidden deaths. <laughs> um, we're back from the nether, and we have quite a lot of stuff. So first of all, we got over a stack of cobalt ore and over half a stack of ardite ore, which is actually like a lot. Okay, it's like way more than I expected. We hit the absolute mother load back there, which is totally awesome. And then also, we ended up um, mining up a little bit of draconium ore, nether draconium, and some dimensional shard ore, which was very cool because those things are not usable yet. But we actually were able to mine the ore and get some of that stuff early. So when, that, uh, when those mods come out, we'll be a little bit ahead of the game. Not by a lot, but, you know, by about a half a stack of, of those materials, which is always good. So, we got a bunch of stuff from the nether here, but most importantly, we're going to try to smelt down, let's say, uh, two to eight, cobalt to ardite. So, what we'll get here is half cobalt, half manulin, because what's going to happen is two of the cobalt and two of the ardite are going to go in towards making four, is this right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this should be triple of this. Ah. Okay, hold on, wait. That's that's going to be it. So th so it'll be like this. You see, so one, one quarter of this will be ardite. 
and then uh, three quarters will be cobalt. So this much cobalt will go into cobalt, this much cobalt and ardite will go into making manulin, which will make the same amount of cobalt, uh, same amount of manulin that we have as the cobalt. So let's just zoom through this as well uh, with a quick little edit. Okay, looks like they all went. And uh, just these, these three are remaining because I, I placed them back in after. But we do have manulin being made and cobalt being made. And it should be equal. So it looks like one block of cobalt and one block of manulin. It should be. I think. Oh. So I guess manulin takes more or less. It's not, it's not an equal split then. That's fine. Um, that's six ingots of manulin. That should be enough to make... The manulin sword, or maybe a manulin something or other. I mean, this is a really good weapon, so we'll probably stick with this for a while, but uh, eventually we'll want to make something out of manulin, and we'll have that in there. But for now, we have 12 ingots of cobalt smelted, and plenty more if we need it. But let's see if that's enough to make an, a head for the, the big boy. And also, we'll see if we can get a cobalt sharpening kit. Actually, we don't need to, because this can already mine cobalt. Okay, so our pixel's good. Let's look at making... Maybe... Let's look at making, like, a hammer. Okay, so for a hammer, we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need a hammer head. Bam. Put that in there. We're going to need a tough binding. And then we're going to need two of these large plates. Um, actually, no, a hammer doesn't take a binding, but that's fine. Hammer, so it's hammerhead, two large plates, and one large tool rod. That's what you need for that. So we're going to make the tough rod. Huh. I think what we'll do is we will make a fully cobalt head with repairing moss so that it doesn't die. See, look, look this pick actually repaired itself, which is totally awesome. So we're going to get that going. But cobalt has like a really high durability. So I think we're going to make the head out of cobalt. We'll make the two bindings out of manulin? Either either manulin or paper. Probably paper. And then we'll make the, rough, the rod out of paper as well. So we're going to need lots of paper. So let's see how we're doing on that front. How can we make paper that's easy? Rice. We can actually get rice to do it. Um, or... Scrap boxes from Tech Reborn or Stronghold Libraries. Okay, so either we grow rice, which I'm not sure if we actually have. Let's do this. Z. We don't have rice there. Don't have rice there, 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 there. Nope. Okay, so we're going to go with the paper. So we got to do some sugar canes. Or we're going to go with the sugar canes to make the paper. And I think what we should do is plant them up. Get them growing. Um, we're going to need nine of them. I think we're going to need all of this. All right, you know what? We'll get some sugar canes later if we need to farm them. But for now, we're just going to have one. And we'll plant, them, we'll plant them over here somewhere. We'll start, we'll start putting a couple things outside here. Okay. Um, let's get a bucket of water. Talk about riveting commentary, man. Woo! All right. Let's put this down. So we're gonna do a little bit of a a little bit of a pouring job for this cobalt head. So let's get the paper tools ready. But let's also just make a special, you know, stone head or something, which we will need stone for. I think it's eight stone, but I'll just make sure by having 16. So let's put a head down. Eight stone does it. Yeah, eight stone. And then the tool rod will be paper. Wow. This is a value of 2.25 paper. So we need 12 paper for that, okay? And we need, wow. So that's four each. So that's 32 paper. So that's 44 paper we need for both of these pieces. I'm going to need to do some paper farming. So paper tool rod, like so. And we're going to need two of these large plates. And I know that I know that it's not really... 
you know, I mean, whatever. Okay, we're going to do it. We need 32 paper. We're going to do it. I know that it's not the most productive when it comes to durability, but I mean, we're making the stupid thing out of cobalt and we'll add a diamond to it and then we're going to put moss on it. So it really doesn't matter. Um, we're starting to get full on inventory, but that's fine. So we'll come over here, pour some gold onto this to make a cast. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, done. Okay. And then, oh, we didn't need to move that away. Then cobalt head. Let's see if there's going to be enough. Ooh, I think so. I think there is. Yeah, it looks like it takes eight ingots. This is going to take a long time to finish, buddy. Okay, it looks like it's done. So we have a cobalt hammerhead, which is already at 780 durability, which is pretty crazy, but that will go down very fast because it's a hammer because of the way it is. So let's go down to our tool forge, put all of our pieces in. Obviously they were not put in correctly. And we'll call this Sam's ham. Uh, we'll just call it Sam's ham. It's always Sam's ham, has to be, otherwise uh, the world crumbles. And then we'll add probably two levels of redstone on it, maybe three. Uh, first, we'll put a diamond. Then we'll put some redstone. Um, let's break one of these down. All right. So two levels of redstone leaves us with two modifiers. So 40% speed. And it has momentum. Well, mining, mining blocks increases your speed as long as you keep going. Nice. So that, I guess, is part of cobalt. Okay, so apparently breaking down these purple, the, the trees with the purple leaves on them will very rarely drop you some slime balls. Um, and I got that tip from NZ Hook. So thank you very much, NZ. Where you at, brother? He's over there somewhere. Thank you, brother, for that. And we're going to head back now, and we're going to do our hammer. Get that hammer done, boy. Oh, crap. Oh, my goodness. All right, looks like we got all of our stuff to make these. So we're gonna make an expander for horizontal and we're gonna rotate everything and make an expander for vertical. So we should still have two modifiers left. We're gonna go horizontal width and vertical width. So this should be mining in a five by five, which is pretty huge, but that also will make things very easy. So let's, let's give it a try. Let's mine this. Yeah, it's totally going to do it. That's so good. That is so good. All right, let's do this. And this. Ah, okay, so it breaks through the center, not from the, from the bottom block, which is very useful. Um, and we're actually, you know what? We're going to do that, actually. We're going to break from the center because we need to re redo the floor. So it's good to have the floor out. All right, so this is going to work just fine. We're going to go quite a ways. Um, I broke this, which is fine. I mean, it's all, we're all, we're going to get it all redone. I'm going to get my inventory cleared out. That shouldn't be there, but that's fine. And um, yeah, what, where's the wall at? Right here. This is what we want, boys. Woo! We're going to go all the way out to the edge, and we're going to have it looking out into the distance, all pretty like. So let's get ourselves kitted up here where are we at bam this is breaking things very quickly but it's also as you can see the durability is not taking a nice taking nicely to the heavy amount of blockage so we definitely need to get an extra modifier on this bad boy as soon as possible and then we need to get our moss on there because the speed is fine but we just need to get some moss on there because right now i don't think we can repair this with anything Oh, we can use paper. And it only takes, you know, 15, 16. All right, that took 17 to do like halfway. So it'll probably take like half a stack of paper to repair this guy. But I'm wondering if we can use anything else. We used cobalt and paper, so we're kind of screwed. But that's fine. At least we have like a temporary way to repair this. And speaking of paper, let's replant these. 
So this is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching, you guys. I really enjoyed this episode, and I'm very excited to move all of our Tinker stuff over into the inside and really start developing a nice, you know, useful um, base full of, you know, machines and tools and all this cool stuff. So this is a big start, having this room able to be emptied out and, and uh, remade so quickly. Let's also do a quick check on our chest. Nice, we got a full double stack. Let's just give that a quick reset, just in case. And uh, we'll make sure our furnaces are on. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you give it a subscribe and a like, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Okay, bye. See ya. See you next time. Bye. Hee <laughs> hee.